on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got a great guest. I've been trying to get this man on for quite a while. He's an actor, producer, writer, comedian, musician and dad. It's Adam Pally. Adam, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, do you know what? It's an absolute pleasure, and and I'm so glad I finally got you on the show. Um, so we're going to talk about your amazing career and some of the amazing, well, all the amazing things that you you, you you've done to date. But I want to start off. You know why why acting? Why show business? And why not a nine to five job? What actually inspired you to take this direction into one of the most competitive indi- industries known to man? Um. I don't, uh, I have a, 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 I'm not, not very skilled or intelligent. And so with that, that, oh, no, 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 I, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so there weren't many fields open to me, but I always had kind of a flair for the dramatic and, and um, my parents, I come by it honestly, my parents were lounge singers when I was a kid. So I was kind of like Nepo baby adjacent, like Nepo baby if the parents never made it. And <laughs> and so that kind of leaves you with very little options of what you can do and, and making people laugh seem like something that maybe I could do. <laughs> do you know what? I have just got a vision of a ba- ba- baby in a lounge with a glass of whiskey and a... A, a, a cigarette that's me you know, do, you know, do you know what i mean that Cigarette was me away. yes that's that's <laughs> that, that was my upbringing <laughs> that is mm-hmm. awesome i mean with your career at the start did you have a plan in place of what you wanted to achieve and is that plan still in place oh yeah no no, no i had no plan i just knew i wanted to do um comedy and then um from that i i i kind of just kept moving forward in a way like um, when it's kind of the same philosophy I had then that I have now, like when, when you can't figure out what you want to do or how you want to do it, just try to think of something that's funny and then work on that. Mm. I and mean, that, how, that was kind of my plan. I mean, you've, I mean, obviously you're talking about being funny and I can, I can only imagine that is probably one of the most difficult things to do is be funny because it's one thing being that serious straight actor, you know, delivering serious lines but how hard is it actually because you you've starred in so many hilarious films and shows i mean how hard is it to actually be funny on screen um it's it's i mean i i think it's very challenging i mean it's kind of like the endless pursuit is to is to be funny you know um but uh, I think that even more challenging than that, like I look at dramatic actors and think that that seems like a, a challenge um, to me. Um, so I don't know. I think um, I think uh, anything you have to do where you, you can't be embarrassed seems like um, <laughs> a seems like the biggest thing to overcome if that's what you want to do Mm. do you know what i mean yeah 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 i mean i mean again i mean looking at your roles i mean you know you've been in 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 two of the sonic movies you've been in iron man who invited charlie which i think is a hilarious Mm -hmm. movie such a great movie how do you choose your roles i mean what does that role have to thank you to um you know to really get your creative juices going You know, I wish I wish I was at the point in my career where I could really pick and choose, but I don't. But I'm not. I I I don't get to pick and choose. There are things that I go after hard, or things that I make more of an effort to to get. But but I'm I'm still scrapping and and auditioning and, and trying to get anything I get. So I think maybe a different answer to a different question would be like, you try to find in the things that you do get what, what you kind of share with the character and then how that inspires you to, to make it your own. Mm. Um, I think is, is, is the goal so that it seems like, you know, I think it's a high compliment when someone's like, Oh wow. Like how did you choose that? I mean, I didn't, I, I had to fight to get it 
and the fact that it seems like it's mine is probably a, a pretty high compliment. No, so no, 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 definitely. Because the thing is, I mean, you've been in so many wonderful things. I'm still shocked that you've got to fight for anything. But I mean, I, I mean, you know, for all the parts that you've played, has there <laughs> been any parts that you've actually um, that's come across your lap from your agent or, 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 or someone like that that you've said, hell no, I'm not playing that character? No, um, not really. I didn't want to. Uh, I got asked to audition for uh, Jeffrey Dahmer once, and I I didn't want to do that because I just didn't. I don't know. Maybe maybe I will someday, but I just didn't feel like eating people. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm you know, sure that like, wouldn't have happened. There's really. <laughs> <laughs> method acting. <laughs> uh, no, but the evil like. Yeah, no, but you still are like, you know, I don't know. I really like doing comedy and I, I, I see no shame in it. Like, I feel like sometimes, especially as you, as you progress in the entertainment industry, there's a certain stigma to comedy where it's like, it's not as serious a job as a dramatic uh, performance or dramatic script. And I, I just don't. I think it's harder to make people laugh and so i really like comedy and i like doing it and so uh, you know no I, I can't think of anything any role i said no to um i can think of a bunch i didn't get because i probably wasn't really into it and gave a bad audition but no but but the 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 they always say that obviously i mean acting they ha, it has its ups and downs and and obviously you've got to be quite resilient and and there are many parts that you don't get but you know, many actors have said that, that, that it just means that maybe you're not right for that role and you're just waiting for that right role to come along. And, and you know, which I, th I, I think that the roles that I've seen... Yeah, but that's not really in... true, though. Sorry? That's not true. I don't think that's really true, though. No? In what way? <laughs> I don't think that... Like when actors, I think that's something actors tell themselves to feel better <laughs> about not getting the part. Um, Do you mean I've been lied to all this time by no, all the these truth actors? Is, <laughs> yes, yes. The truth is that um, when you don't get a part, it is because you weren't good enough. You were unable to convince them that you were better at the part than someone else. Mm. So regard, like you can frame that any way you want. You can be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm too, I'm not, I'm whatever. I'm too tall. I'm too this and that." It's like, no, you're not. You just didn't do a good enough job. You just didn't get it. <laughs> and that's, I think, a lot of actors. Like I tell myself that all the time, but it's not true. The truth is, I just didn't get. It. I just wasn't. I wasn't as good as the other person in that role. Yeah. So it's it's I it it truly is like you know that's the an act it's like actors are very quick to um put the blame off themselves onto someone else you know and i'm not saying it's all actors fault when they don't get it but like most of the time <laughs> i mean what's what's the biggest misconception <laughs> of show business i mean i mean at, i mean i mean what is the 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 truth in the industry that we don't see as 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 the viewers, as the fans, as, you know, the pe pe people that watch your awesome shows and movies? Oh, I don't think they're, I think everything's pretty, you know, out there. I think you can, you, everyone has access to every, all that information. I think it's pretty, I don't think there is many misconceptions. I think that there are sometimes, like I was saying before, like, there are things you can do to make yourself feel better about, the long journey that is entertainment, but I don't think uh, I don't I don't think there's much like behind the scenes that that people don't know. Mm. I mean, I wanted to. Um, we're going to talk a, a bit about some of the incredible things that you've been in, and most most recently oh. on Netflix, um, which is an awesome show, which is Fubar which is Arnold Schwarz Schwarzenegger and yourself. <laughs> if you can tell the, 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 the viewers a, a bit about your character on who you play and uh, a bit about the show, if you can. 
Uh, I play uh, a weapons expert um, who's found himself in a Turkish prison um, on a short stint, um, which is kind of a bummer considering he's, a, he's also a family man. So he, uh, he owes Arnold's character a favor and um, he gets enlisted to come through with it. And he's a great character. I mean, what, what, what was it like to work on that show? Because literally, when you, came, when you appeared on screen, it was just amazing. And it just lit up the screen, <laughs> I've got to say. Uh, I mean, what was oh, that like you. working on the show? Because, you know, the cast is incredible. The, the, the writing is, is in, in, in incredible. What was that experience like for you? It was great. It was great. I mean, Arnold is, is the best. I love, I love spending any time with him and working with him was a dream. And I've known Fortune a long time. And so it really just felt like he slid, you know, I was just sliding into a job I was fairly comfortable in and uh, they gave me a lot of room to run. And I really had a great time. It, uh, it is an unbelievable cast. I love Nick, the creator. It, it, it was a great gig. I hope to do more of them. Well, I, well, I was going to say, are we going to see the Great Dane again? Because obviously, it does end um, with them <laughs> slightly on 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 the run. I'm not going to spoil anything, uh, slightly, um, <laughs> but we see him on the run. Do we think that we'll see the Great Dane again appear if there's going to be a season two? I I can't. I'm not at liberty to say, especially <laughs> at this time. But I I would say I would hope. I, I would hope. I, I it would be great. I would be great for me to get to do more. I really. Anytime I could spend some some space with Arnold, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, your background is obviously comedy, comedy as well, and in, 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 improvised mm. comedy. So, with yes. a show like that, how much you know freedom did you have on screen to actually go from page, you know, to your improvisations? Uh, I had a little bit of freedom, but a lot of that stuff was like you know really plot heavy. So you have to kind of hit the the main stuff, but Nick and and Arnold especially would give me room like after a couple, after I nailed the information to like go and run. And then Arnold, you could see Arnold like come to life and really like to improvise with me. And it was just a thrill for both of us, I think. I mean, obviously with with, with Arnold, I mean, I just watched his uh, documentary on Netflix. And even though he's achieved so much in his life, the one thing I was so impressed with is that he's got two pet donkeys, which I just think's hilarious that he let he oh, lets yeah. in, he lets in That's like the least of his is. animal. <laughs> yeah, he's got animals like that'll just like walk right up to the kitchen window. Like a llama will be like, Hey, can I have a beer? It's a it's a wild place. Can't be bad. Can't be bad. And then I wanna uh, quickly touch on um who invited Charlie because this is a film that literally is full of laughs and heart and you'll find yourself laughing and being hit by emotional bombs as it captures the true essence <laughs> of what the pandemic was like because me uh, myself and my wife we were key workers so we had to work all the way through the pandemic so so we didn't oh, isolate bless, yeah. but we were in the mix of it and and we saw it every sing single day and i've got to say the scene where Charlie and the family step outside because they hear something and everyone's clapping. Um, me, me, me and my wife looked at each other and we had a tear in our eyes because literally we can remember the day that that happened and they did that and it was so, yeah. so nice to see. I mean, the character of Charlie is just amazing. He really, really is. He's like, you know, everyone's... I would love to have a mate like Charlie. I really, really would. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, how how much of 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 you personally did you bring to the table for the character of Charlie? I think I brought a lot personally. I mean, I think it, I I think I'm that kind of friend to my friends. I think I'm not. I don't like shut their house unannounced, <laughs> but I think I'm a good hang, you know. And I think I think I um, was able to translate that into these scenes which is really like the whole magic trick of the whole thing is like how do you take the vibe you're feeling in one moment and recreate it in a moment that's not real and, and i and i think this movie was just it, it was easy to put on those clothes and kind of recreate that vibe in those moments and it almost felt like it was happening again mm. 
I mean, I've got to say the great thing about this m movie, and I've got to tell everyone that's listening and viewing right now, go out and watch it because literally I think it's got every bit oh, of the thanks. pandemic that um, <clears throat> from the toilet rolls, uh, which I think is hilarious, <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, you know, there is still someone somewhere with a garage full of toilet rolls trying to sell, sell them on, I swear. But um, it, it, it was just great. I mean, there was a moment. Pretty in sure the it's my mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet rolls on special. <laughs> Contact Adam. Um, mm -hmm. But there is there was a moment in it that reminded me a bit, and 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 you're gonna you're gonna probably laugh at this. Highway to Heaven, which was a show that I used to watch when I was a kid, and Charlie reminded me of the Michael mm -hmm. Landon character um with obviously without the weed um but um it was uh -huh. just like it was nice <laughs> it, it was nice to see you know him but you know potentially i don't again ruin it for anyone fixing a family and then fixing himself as well uh it it, it, it was just just absolutely fun, fun, fun fantastic i mean personally how was your experience like uh during the big p uh because you've got kids um <laughs> You know, did you have yes. to isolate and, and, and how crazy did you go? Um, yeah, we had to isolate. We went as crazy as I think everybody did with young kids. Uh, but we were, I think the, the positive of having young kids is that you didn't have a lot of time to sit and fret about issues outside of your control because you had to think of just like tomorrow, how am I going to get this kid to pay attention to school on an iPad tomorrow or how am I going to get this kid to exercise or how, you know, it just became very like day to day immediate. And for me, who's someone who's used to traveling and not being home that much and pretending to be other people, it was nice to get a really long time to just be myself and with my family and almost like it felt, even though it wasn't true, like I was protecting them. Mm. Um, even though it's something that couldn't be protected from, um, but, uh, it, we were isolated. We were outside the city and, um, we were very lucky to, to have that. Uh, but it was a strange time. So would you like to take home a piece of film history or TV history into your own home? Find your own piece of magic with Prop Store, the world's leading auctioneers of film props, costumes, and more. So check out propstore.com or follow the link in the description of this video. And while you're doing that, why don't you use our special code? Our special code will give you 10% off anything in the buy now section. And the code is easy to remember. It's Brian10. That's B R Y A N 10 and it's just above the finger, just here. Use that at the checkout to get your 10% off. That's propstore.com. It, it, it def, definitely was a strange, strange, strange time. And, and I think every adult out there with kids uh, did actually turn into uh, school teachers um, and IT technicians mm -hmm. um, all at the same time. Uh, and, because... and short order cooks and dinners. Yeah, we had to do a lot. Yeah, we did. We did. But um, slowly but sure, surely, it's getting back to uh, the new normal. I hate that word, the new normal. But mm -hmm. uh, it's getting back to normal. Well, it's two is... words. It's probably because it's it's two words. It's two <laughs> words. Yeah, that's fair enough. Two words. Um, yeah. But, um, I mean, my, 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 my wife's quite picky with films, and she loved... Who invited Charlie? And she wanted me to ask you, oh, are you. we going to see Charlie again? Because literally, <laughs> I think that it's definitely room for maybe another film. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if it had the uh, economic impact that would garner a sequel, but you never know. Um, and uh, tell your wife, thank you very much. And I really, really appreciate it. But I don't I have a concrete answer for her. But it would be nice to find out what happens in the life of Charlie. Maybe a series. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, it'll be I like I like the idea of the, the life of Charlie. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah, <laughs> pitch then, it, pitch it. Yeah, 
Excellent. Yeah, I'll get credit for that. Brilliant. Yeah, I'll get on it. Um, <laughs> but um, but then we go on to what you're working on um, at the moment. Uh, well, I don't know if you're working on it at the mo- moment, but Knuckles, which obviously we've all seen Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, which was uh-huh. uh, an amazing film. And again, my kids got very, very excited because I finally got a guest uh, on that they recognized and um you know the only other time they were excited was when i had some of the cast of encanto on the show so that's it's big, quite that's it, a big get it is isn't it uh, and yeah. and when when they saw that i had you they were like well excited uh but you're working on knuckles which is a spin-off series i mean has that been filmed already and can you tell us anything yeah. about it without your nda exploding <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not allowed to say much about it, but we are wrapped. We're finished. Um, it should be out. Uh, I don't know when. Um, sooner than later. Um, and uh, it was. It's big and fun, and it's reminiscent of the movies. But um, it's it's got more of my tone to it. I would say. Um, but it's just, a, it, <clears throat> I had such a blast working on it and a lot of for an actor, you, you go in and you do a small part and you get to go come back and do it a little more. And then someone goes, Hey, here's your own TV show. You're, it's truly like winning the lottery. So. <laughs> and then, um, on, on Twitter, um, Jeff Fowler, the director, um, a little while back in April, Obviously, tweeted a, a a lovely clapper board there, um, just 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 talk, talking about shooting <sighs> the actual show. Uh, but the cast in this, mm-hmm. once again, you are surrounded by literally amazing cast. So that's Chris Christopher Lloyd, Sir Doc Brown, um, great people. Carrie yeah. from Robin Hood Prince. Lloyd. Yeah, Carrie from Robin Hood Prince of Tights and the yep. Princess Bride. Uh, 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 mm-hmm. Stock, uh, Stockard Channing from obviously Greece. I mean, again, I mean, obviously you are saying that you had this bit part in Sonic and then obviously you've got this bigger part and, 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 and you do it doing this show. I mean, I mean, again, I mean, if you don't mind me ask, asking your age, I think you're 41. Am I right in saying that? That's to, you're, you're totally fine in saying that as sad as it sounds. Yes. I'm 41. <laughs> it's all right. I'm 44 and I look like I've had a pay, paper round in Beirut, but, um, but y- y- you know, you're of that <laughs> nah. era where you've got back, you to the great. Fu- you've got back to the future. You've got princess bride, Robin of Prince of tight. I mean, what's it like actually being on screen with all these people that you probably watched at an early age? Oh, it's great. It's great. You know, I, I've been very lucky in my career um, to work with, you know, some like legendary actors from Robert De Niro to Jim Carrey and Schwarzenegger. So it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's one of the perks of the job, you know, is that you get to suit up days across from like real, real amazing longevity and talent. And, and you learn something from everybody and you put in your bag of tricks and, and you know, you, you hope one day that, that that's you when you're older and people talk are talking about you like that. And I'm sure that day will definitely come because I, I cannot wait for Knuckles. Uh, my kids can't either. So we're really, really excited. Um, and then I just, I just want, want, wanted to ask as well that uh, you mentioned in previous interviews about getting time to watch things when you've got kids, which uh, I completely sympathise mm-hmm. with because I'm at that age where I'm 44. So when I'm, I'm, I'm going to dedicate my time to watch something, I always think to myself, this is going to take an hour away from my life. Is it going to be worth it? Uh, I mean, is, is anything changed? Yeah. Uh, do you get time to watch, watch stuff when you're not working? Uh, no. I have a little time this summer because my kids are at sleepaway camp. So I, I have a little more um, leeway to relax and watch stuff. Um, but no, I, I, I still have not seen anything at all. I, I don't know what anything is. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is fair enough. And I've got uh, just a, a few more questions for you before, before we bid 
farewell. I mean, obviously, you've done some amazing shows, um, and you've even been a scout uh, biker in The Mandalorian, uh, which must must have been cool mm-hmm. to do, uh, because I'm a big Star Wars fan uh, yes, my, very myself. Yes, cool. I mean, is there plans now to go to conventions uh, and to meet fans? Because no, I, I, I don't know if you know. No. <laughs> I mean, that... well, look, I never, you never say never. You never say never because you never know economically where you're going to be. But I think that in order to do that, I, 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 I think in order to do that, you need to be um, like very successful in in the in the world like i don't know if there's gonna if if there would be so much demand for sudeikis and i at those signing tables <laughs> thing is right i i i won't put yourself down you've been in quite a lot of things a lot of successful things as you know and i appreciate and, it and these 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 conventions is quite i mean i know there's some actors that literally don't want to do do them because they see their job as their job that's what they do they go to work they perform and then they go home uh which is understandable um but it would be great to see you at a convention and obviously bearing in mind that you've been in a star wars thing now <laughs> literally you're set up for life for convention so you know if anything happened you'll be sorted well <laughs> hook me up hook me up tell me who those agents are i want to meet them <laughs> i'm there and then one of my last last questions that i ask all my guests is that if your life was a movie adam what title would it have and who would you like to play you um i would call it uh (laughs) the adam pally story and then i would have every actor in hollywood that like looks like me play me at different ages so it would be like jake johnson and max greenfield and then like also um What's his name from Slums of Beverly Hills? David, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody gets a crack yeah. at playing me. <laughs> See, that's pretty fair. I mean, and 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 what else have you got come 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 coming out? What are you working on at the moment? Or can't can't you say? Is it all well? Secrets? Right now, right now, I, I just finished Knuckles, and I'm and I'm supporting the writers and and actors on strike uh, so that they can get a fair deal in their. Um, battle with the amptp so that's kind of what i'm focusing on Mm. and and again i mean you know it's a great great cause to support uh i mean i didn't know much about the writer's strike before i had few of the writers on from different shows and it's Mm -hmm. incredible how 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 they're being being treated especially when without writers um actors wouldn't have words we'll just have mime artists on (laughs) yeah and i i don't like clowning (laughs) No, <laughs> <laughs> but Adam, you've been a great guest, and and, and thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, it's been great to have you on, and I can't wait for Knuckles and and everyone watch who who who's invited uh, who invited Charlie. It's a great movie, um, and we want to try and get another one out of you at some point. <laughs> and do you know what? Now your camera is working perfectly. It's not freezing once. <laughs> there you go. That's all right. it takes is for the interview to end exactly but adam look after yourself keep safe and uh, stay, <laughs> you too sir thank you brian friend.